Hey, today I'm talking about three different versions of Miracle on 34th Street. I'm talking about the 1947 version, the 1973 version, and the 1994 version. In chronological order, first up is... 1947 version. This is the original classic starring Edmund Gwen and birthday bro of mine Maureen O'Hara. If you're unfamiliar the basic premise is it is Thanksgiving Day and the Macy's Day Parade is a happening but wouldn't you know it fake Santa Claus is drunk but just so luckily real Santa Claus is there to show up and help everyone out and then he gets hired at Macy's and everyone loves him except for the psychologist at Macy's because apparently Macy's is big enough to have their own psychologist. Eventually Santa gets put on trial. So I think the premise is fun. Santa getting put on trial like that's brilliant. And there's a lot of things I like about this movie. I think this is definitely a very well-made movie. I think the actors especially the little girl she gave a great performance. Also Santa himself was very jolly and good. I didn't like how aggressive he was at times but that is his comeuppance so makes sense. It's got a character flaw. It definitely has a lot of heart. I really like the end. The end was really cute. Also, my favorite scene in this one, as well as all three of them, is the scene in which the non-English speaker comes to Santa when he's in his Santa chair, and they're like, it's okay. They don't speak English. They just want to, like, say hi, and that's it. But then, of course, Santa being Santa, Santa can speak any language. And so in this one, he speaks Dutch, and I'm like, well, that was great. They even, like, sing a little Dutch song together, and it's so adorable. I legitimately got teary-eyed, and I love it. It. Now this one actually isn't my favorite of the three. I do like it a lot, but I just had some issues with the bad guy. So the bad guy is the store psychologist and he's maybe over analyzing slash giving wrong diagnosis to one of the other employees and Santa's not happy about that and so he yells at them, they get in a fight and that's how the whole courtroom stuff starts. So Santa does explicitly say that he likes the study of psychology, he likes psychologists looking at it, Santa's actual issue is that he thinks this guy is a fraud. He questions this guy's credibility, if he's certified, but the way they go about it makes me more feel like the filmmakers are against the study of psychology in general. Because a lot of things they say leading up to the big confrontation, that makes it feel like they really don't believe in psychology as a concept. But again, technically, Santa does say he is in favor of psychology, but he says it so quickly and so fast that I don't I don't know if I believe him. The whole thing was just very muddled to me and just didn't leave the best feeling in me. So that brought it down a bit. I still enjoyed this and would totally recommend it. It's definitely a good well-made film. It's just that aspect of the film is kind of grayed out a little bit. So it's definitely good and worth a watch. The next up is... The 1973 version. This one is a made-for-TV film, and boy oh boy, can you tell. So this one is not good. It's not the worst thing ever, but like on a fundamental filmmaking level, it's not good. There's so much filler, which is kind of hilarious how much filler there is. Like there's so many just long shots of the parade happening at the beginning that don't add anything. But then even going into like filmmaking language, like there's no sense of area or like the one that made me stop the movie and laugh. I have to explain how filmmaking works for a second. Is that when there's a shot of like two people doing a walk and talk, like walking down a hallway and they're talking and the camera's moving along with them. How that starts is there's two people standing on a mark next to each other and then they're waiting for their cue to go and then generally at the same time the assistant director gives the cue for the camera to move and the actors to move and then they take a few steps and then after somebody's steps then they start the dialogue and go. And then generally speaking the editor then cuts out everything except for right before they start talking. But they're moving. They're usually moving. In this movie the editor decided to not do that. The shot starts with the two actors just standing there waiting for their cue. They're not like the characters you know mulling about or anything. It's literally just the actors waiting to hear the word go and then they move and then after five ten feet then they start the actual scene. And they just didn't cut any of the other extra stuff out because whoever thought it was part of the scene apparently. It's so funny. It's so funny. I laughed a lot. Also, I think this movie just forgot that this is supposed to be a courtroom drama because the courtroom drama stuff in both the other ones is roughly half the film. But in this one, it doesn't start until 20 minutes left in the movie. And that includes credits. So yeah. <sighs> 
Now, if you've seen this as like a child and have nostalgia for it, sure, give it a watch. It's not the worst thing ever. It's just not a well-made film, and they also made lots of changes that were not the right choice. I didn't like it, and in general, I wouldn't recommend it. It's only if you have nostalgia for it that I would recommend it, because it's just, it's not good. <laughs> And lastly is the 1994 version. And spoilers, this one's my favorite. I love this one. It fixes like all of the issues I had with the other ones. Like a great example is the boyfriend character. So like in the other ones, what's happening is this little, let's say seven year old girl befriends this new neighbor man. And like they have some adventures together, you know, just a grown man and a small girl. And it's technically all for the ploy of like him trying to meet the mother and get with her but like no 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 grown man should just be befriending a small child just two complete strangers nope in this one though they fixed it because the main man and main woman have been dating for a while so they actually know each other another thing they fixed is the bad guy because in the other two it's the psychologist and it's i think it's just kind of muddled in general like his whole deal but in this one it's actually a competing store trying to bankrupt macy's so that they can buy them out and take them over and so they're doing it with nefarious means and that makes a lot of sense they're just trying to to like pounce on this opportunity to like really screw these people over and it's like yeah of course they're gonna be like really mean and go after santa because like they're trying to do a corporate bio type of thing of course they would stoop to those levels so yeah that just works really really good they didn't change the ending it definitely still works it's just not as the original ending has such a great visual element to it but this one still is good and technically is probably better it's hard to say i don't know i will add to that my favorite scene at all of them was the scene with the kid who can't speak english meeting santa and santa being able to speak to them and like I watched this one last this is the third one I've seen so I'd seen this movie two other times so I knew it was coming though I thought it might not happen because Santa did the thing where he was meeting the main little girl and he was like oh I can actually speak other languages and then he spoke Russian and Swahili to her and I'm like oh maybe they just combine the two scenes and they're not gonna have the really cool scene but then they did and even though I knew it was coming and knew what to expect I freaking cried like it was just such a beautifully done scene it's a different language in all three versions and this one it's ASL and according to IMDb trivia the little girl didn't know that he was going to start speaking to her in sign language and her look of excitement is genuine and I believe it because just the way she lit up is just what cut into me and just like yeah no it was such a beautifully done amazing scene I love it so much yeah it's great also I forgot to mention the cast the cast of this movie is insane you got Rich and Adderbro who's a great Santa Claus Elizabeth Perkins who's an awesome lead Dylan McDermott terrific James Ramirez Jane Leaves. I was just like, wait, is that her? And it was. And I was really happy about that. And then we got Matilda herself, Mara Wilson, just kicking ass. Allison Janey has one scene, and I'm like, what? Cool. And then another surprise appearance was Jennifer Morrison. She plays an elf and she has one line. And like I saw her in the background at first, and I'm like, wait, is that her? And then I verified it on IMDb, and it was. It's her second thing ever. She was 15 when this came out. It was just cool to see a celebrity that I liked in other stuff appearing in one of her first roles. So just kudos to the casting director. They really nailed it. So yeah, but anyway, I loved this movie and would wholeheartedly recommend it. If you're gonna watch just one of these versions, watch this one. Like, it's perfect. They freaking nailed it. It's so much fun. It's got so much heart, so much wonder, so much Christmas spirit. It's just, ah, it's perfect. They, they nailed it. I loved it. I love it so much. Alrighty, now for today's rankings in chronological order. First up is the 47 version, sitting at number 107 in the quite like section. So it's basically a 4 to 5. Bringing up the rear is the 73 version, sitting at number 250 in the didn't like section. And then saving the best for last is the 94 version, sitting at number 49 in the really like section. The really like section is really big. It's at about the halfway point. <laughs> and this is out of a total of 264 old movies so far this year.